official Crystal City pilgrimage. Uh, throughout this weekend, we uh, have the unique opportunity uh, to learn with and from each other um, about the United States' largest multinational family internment camp, about the American government's wartime collusion with 13 Latin American countries that led to the kidnapping and forced detention of thousands of people um, and families and the lasting impacts on our communities. Um, we will also be highlighting parallels to what our community experienced during World War II with the ongoing targeting and detention of minority and immigrant communities by the federal government today. Uh, I am a Gose, which is fifth generation Japanese American. Um, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> My grandfather, Edison Uno, uh, spent his formative teenage years uh, incarcerated in Crystal City. Uh, the years he spent here established the basis of his lifelong commitment uh, to fighting for government accountability and civil rights for all marginalized people. Those of us who were directly impacted and are descendants of those directly impacted by incarceration know what it is to carry fear, distrust, and um, residual trauma from those experiences. But at the same time, we also carry our ancestors' compassion for one another, their resilience for the unknown, and a fighting spirit for what's right. Uh, we're so excited to be here and to have helped organize this pilgrimage. Kaz and I met at uh, Crystal City in 1946 when we were three and uh, four years old. <laughs> Carissa, she said she's a Gose man. I'm a Nisei, so I'm feeling really good. <laughs> and arriving in Berkeley, Maoki remarked, wow, Berkeley sure is a big camp. <laughs> and now retired, he cares for his grandchildren, enjoys ballroom dancing, and plays with a ukulele band, Sentimental Stars and he has written a song about Crystal City. To, to find out the hardships that I've heard my parents have gone through and the injustice they went through and I think um, they still have not have not uh, been recognized uh, a formal apology or a redress so I think we need to keep the keep the fight going uh, for their sake Absolutely. and keep the story going so this doesn't happen again it's really really important to connect our communities together and uh, say never again for anyone not never again only for particular people never again for anyone uh, i'm i'm very glad that my children all three of them came with me so, yeah that's wonderful yeah i i was very happy about that they don't allow victor why was it important for you to come here today um, just to support my mom i wanted to kind of see it also and then they'll see it in the us three kids decided to come with her and support my mom. <laughs> And so this is just a story of two teenagers wandering down to this root cellar, sneaking out of the barbed wire, and finding light in a pretty dark place. And it's called Two Candles in the Dark. Don't it feel like a movie Teaching this girl how to waltz Let feet she might have but she sure feels nice in my arms Old folks sing an old song Playing the agreed upon key My eyes are stuck on her Her eyes don't leave her feet um, And actually that's one of the first things that I ever did was go on a Tule Lake pilgrimage and uh, that was the first time that I'd ever heard the, about the concept of redress. 
and to me, I, my mind almost exploded because, <laughs> you know, you learn about what your parents experienced and you, you witness the racism that your parents experienced and you witness the racism that you yourself experienced and all your observations and it never occurred to me that there was a way to get justice or to change things. And so that was when I started working on the redress movement. Um, we're going to hopefully organize a little caravan across the border and uh, donate some of these things to shelters on the other side. Plus, Adelanto, which is a big detention center in Victorville, uh, where there are adult detainees. Uh, they're being released, either being deported or else to wait for their asylum hearing. And they're leaving Adelanto with nothing except for the clothes on their backs. So, there's a group out there who asked us to um, donate 50 backpacks with toiletries and other necessities. So we're going to work on that in November and December. Mm -hmm. We're supporting that Pseudo for Solidarity um, organization, our project, bringing uh, 125,000 cranes to Washington, D.C. in June of next year to express our support and also to perhaps lobby Washington uh, in terms of some laws about closing the camps and a family separation and things. I think we really hit a chord because I think a lot of other communities actually have been waiting for us to make a move. I mean this is kind of some of the feedback that I've been getting from other people and there were some Mexican-American immigration activists that came to some of our programs and have really picked up the slogan never again is now and they're they're propagating this and this whole message about using the the you know incarceration experience of Japanese Americans and the repatriation of Mexican Americans and the Chinese exclusion and the Muslim ban and are really drawing those parallels. My name is Libya Yamamoto. My name is Maoki. My maiden name was Maoki. I was born in Chiclayo, Peru. Northern, Cal Northern part of Peru. Well, my father was first taken on July the 6th at night. All the ladies that were in front of the police station, they were sobbing quietly. And between sobs, I said to my mother, where is he going? And she said, we don't know. And pretty soon the men started singing and boarding the back of a truck. And and I wanted to run over to him and hug him mm. goodbye, you know, but they wouldn't let me. Mm. And so then they all got on the truck and they started waving goodbye. And all we could do was just goodbye, you know, just wave to him and say goodbye. And, and then as soon as the truck disappeared, the ladies bawled out, started crying out loud. And I cried out too. And then we boarded a ship in Callao, outside of Lima. And I remember going on that boat, you know, the, out the, up the plank. There was lined with American soldiers with guns and bayonets. And I was really afraid. And I thought, well, they're going to kill us. And they told us, you're going to be united with your father. And so we went to San Antonio by train, and then they would put us on a on a old the rickety bus, and they took us to Crystal City. He came five days later, but when he came, we were so excited. All three of us children jumped on him and hugged him, and and we were also shocked that he was had lost a lot of weight and he had been skinnier than we had ever seen him before. I think it's terrible that they should do that to their families, to separate them. We were separated with my father, from my father for six months, and it was horrible. I mean, we couldn't stop worrying about him. We didn't know where he was or what he was doing or anything about him. But I think his children are the same, you know, they don't know where their next food is coming from and how their parents are. It's, it must be awful for them. And I, I really feel for them and I pray for them. And I hope that the government sees how very evil it is to separate them. And they'll stop that.
I hope this stuff in Trump realizes how what a damaging thing it is. It really warms our heart that though we came here 75 years ago involuntarily and as prisoners, we return today as friends and comrades in a bigger vision of a better America. There were 37 other Buddhist priests here at Crystal City together with Reverend Yamashita. 22 Shinto priests and two Christian ministers uh, in the Japanese section of this camp. And I'm very, very happy that some of you have decided to speak to our children on Monday. And I hope that you bring that up because I, I, I've come to realize more strongly that the only obstacles in, in, in our kids' lives or anybody's lives are those that we make up here. The physical ones, we can, we can uh, transcend, as you guys did uh, show, uh, by transcending your experience. So you graduated from Christmas City? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. But I was looking for somebody here, you know. Yeah. But obviously, if they're in their 90s, they're not going to come. Uh -huh. I think the man in the White House needs to be replaced. It was, it was like, uh, <laughs> he has done so many things that are contrary. To what we learn as, you know, people in the community. Mm -hmm. He just really is, uh, has no compassion. And he is a businessman, of course. And uh, it's very sad to think that he has packed the courts with people who... who uh, do his bidding. Uh -huh. yes. And so I'm trying to persuade people to think twice before they cast their ballot. Our job as, as Japanese Americans um, is, is to be in solidarity with other communities in our fight for justice. There really isn't, it, you know, it, 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 it's like a platitude, right? But like there is no justice for some of us without justice for all of us. There's no collective freedom and liberation if it doesn't involve all of us and if we can't all wholly be, um, be free. Um, you know, even when we think about, oh, well, you know, Japanese Americans, well, there are black Japanese Americans, there are Latino Japanese Americans, there are immigrant Japanese Americans, there are um, queer Japanese Americans, right? There, we exist in all of these different intersections, and again, it doesn't make sense to parse down um, who we are as a community or to say this is just Japanese Americans, right, and this is the organizing that we are doing. Um, it needs to be in solidarity with all these other communities because we exist in all of these other communities as well.
my parents entered camp childless and all of a sudden they had three children in a concentration camp. <laughs> but the, the point uh, of um, my wanting to tell you about our family was that at least uh, we were kept together as, as uh, unconstitutional and inhuman as what they did to us was, they kept us together. What the government do, is doing now, separating children of all ages, from babies to teenagers, from their parents, is inhumanity on steroids. So, the message is stop repeating history. Never again is now. Yo creo que ya es tiempo de poner un alto, de decir ya, basta, tanto dolor, tanto sufrimiento de nuestras criaturas, de nuestros próximos líderes de este mundo. No queremos más encarcelamientos, no queremos más centros de concentración, no más centros de concentración, por favor. Um, we want to express our gratitude for the work of Interfaith Welcome Coalition and would like to present this donation of $1,000 to the Interfaith Welcome Coalition. We thank you for your work and um, we know that uh, we want you to know that we are behind that uh, along with all the other organizations here today.